Hey guys, this is Ross. Today I wanted to talk about a handful of varieties that have really been impressing me this year that in the past I don't think I've given really enough credit. Um, and I wanted to really highlight them because they are really special. And one of them here is uh, called Grease de Saint Jean. This is a fig that is a little finicky. It's tough to get it established. Um, I have a few trees of it. Actually, one of them in the ground. It is a commercial fig coming from France that really can perform very well for people in shorter season climates. I've noted here that it's exceptional in rainier conditions. The rain we just had, there has been some really nice fruits off of this tree, even after the rain. And so for my money, I've been really impressed with it not just for the rain resistance, but also for the flavor of this. This has been really, really thick and jammy, like um, on the level of a Col de Dame, which is really what it said about this variety. It's also extremely beautiful on the outside. It's uh, gray skinned, almost blue. And so for my money, again, I, I just think this one is definitely deserving of some attention it's not talked about a lot and I think the reason for that is it, it's, it is a bit finicky and I think it just does require a little bit more water than other varieties and it's a little bit more difficult to get established but once it does get established it puts out some really nice figs. This thing here is super super good. Um, another one that we have this that's been really impressive this year is called Sicilian Dark. And I got this one actually from Big Bill, which if you go and talk to him or you go to his website, he'll actually tell you that this is just one that is really hardy and productive for him. It's a workhorse. It's not really meant for flavor, or at least that's not why he prefers it. Um, so I got it from a friend of mine, and it's amazing. Like. We did a taste test here of a lot of hardy Chicago types recently with a lot of friends of mine. And this was definitely one of the favorites. And the reason I think for that is because of the drier soil that we have where this tree is planted. I don't know if this will continue if I plant it somewhere else, like in a container or at a different spot that has a, a much more uh, moist location. But for my money, when it's in that dry soil I have, it's got a really incredible berry flavor. Um, people raved about this. It's super fruity. And the berry flavor really comes through. Um, and that's a hardy Chicago type, by the way, which, you know, I don't think it's really talked about all that much. Again, it's called Sicilian Dark. Another one that we have here that's done really well this season is LSU Huye. And this, this fig has really taken a beating after all of the rain that we've gotten recently. It looks very ugly. Um, and it looks uglier because um, I've kind of left these figs outside by accident. Um, <laughs> so some fruit flies and things have been getting at this and there's a little bit of an issue here with the uh, mold on the skin, but this was also at the taste test and for my money, this is a unique flavor profile that's very underrated. And you could tell by looking at it, um, it just has a fruitier honey profile that is quite special. You don't really find this all the time. Let me put this down actually, it'd probably be easier. There we go. Now tell me that doesn't look pretty good. So this and other trees, the LSU Tiger has been really impressive this year as well, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Reason being is because I think in the past, that's really good. Um, a lot of berry flavor actually in that, which is really surprising. Um, the reason being, I think that LSU Tiger and LSU Huye have really performed well this year is because these branches here have survived. 
the winter. There's a base to work from. And for whatever reason, the quality is really quite special from these trees. Um, when the fruit is formed on the suckers from the base, I find the quality is just inferior. I don't know why that is. Uh, they tend to split more. They tend to crack more. And actually now having said that, we found two figs after this rain that both have split. So it can happen with this fig. It's not impossible. Uh, but I do am finding that it is and certainly one of the better varieties. Like, you know, Rondé Bordeaux, as an example, is another fig that's quite amazing. And a lot of people would probably agree, and it's really quite productive. But after this rain, it was just totally demolished. And that's kind of what separates the really, really special figs from the ones that are, you would say, maybe above average. Um, so... I think LSU Huye is definitely above average, but I wouldn't put it in that really, really special category. But I have been very impressed with it this year. There has definitely been a noticeable improvement in quality in so many different ways. Uh, let me eat these and see what the deal is, even though they've split. Yeah, they're good actually. Very sweet. They still even have some of that berry flavor, and you can see that even on the lesser ripe ones, the pulp is still rather red. I don't know where, I forget where my holier comes from, but some people report only seeing amber on the inside. And uh, I don't know, this one's a really special fig. Whatever, you know, whatever exactly um, this is, if maybe not that I don't think it is LSU Huye, but there are people who have report that, you know, they don't get the same coloration that I do. So it is possible that maybe there is some kind of mix up there. Uh, we also have LSU Tiger, which we've mentioned already. LSU Tiger I've thought of in the past as like a Celeste, but double the size. And this thing has just performed so well, again, from a base here, not from the suckers that have come up, it's made the biggest difference. And I'll, well, actually my knife is over there by the table. These dry so, so well. In fact, this has become, I think, <sighs> let's see, we mentioned Grease de St. Jean. That one really got big points this year. So did Sicilian Dark. I would say LSU Huye went up, but out of all the figs, I think this one has impressed me the most. Um, that I had put lot, a lot less stock into as years had gone on with these in-ground LSU Tigers that I had. When they were in a container, it did fantastic. Um, I raved about this fig. And I think it was just because of the suckers that came up. The suckers are, for whatever reason, producing inferior quality. And now that this has survived the winter. It's just so good. Really nice skin to it. This fig even, it just seems indestructible in my mind as well. This has got such a nice skin. Very unique. I almost want to put this, like I would even, I might even say that this is like venturing into my top 10. Here's some more down here. And they're like drying on the tree. We just had a ton of rain. We just had like an inch and a half of rain. And they're basically like, oh, okay, Ross, nothing happened. We're just gonna keep, we're gonna continue on here with my day. And so this was a favorite of one of my friends actually at a tasting that we did recently. Um, I forget who it was exactly. It might've been my friend, Jenny, uh, but uh, it's really quite a special fig. I, I know that Dan Foster really likes this because of that chewy skin. It's, uh, it's quite something. The last fig I want to mention. So actually there's about six figs here that really have not gotten a lot of shine in the past. But this fig here, I have been on the fence about rather recently. 
in recent years because it's just not performed all that great since I planted it in the ground. Um, a lot of the figs get so big, the eyes tend to be open and they split. And the figs are, are massive. I mean, even bigger than this, like double the size of this, which these are by their own right, a large fig. And I think a lot of that is again, because of the suckers. We had so many weird issues this year or in the past observing these different varieties of the fruit that is produced on those suckers versus the fruit that is produced from a base. This survived the winter. Um, believe it or not, the suckers behind it are just taller uh, at this point, but there's something going on there. I don't really know exactly what it is, but between all of the figs basically that did survive the winter and have a base to work from, the fruit quality is, is higher. There's something going on here. Yes, we did have a dry year and maybe that could be part of it, just having a drier soil. But in any case, I really, really respect these varieties a lot more than I did. And I'm very much so looking forward to so many others I have here planted in the ground that I know do really well. But now that we're gonna work from some sort of structure rather than uh, you know, cutting them way back and having them re-sprout as suckers, we're gonna have so much more tastier fruits and I'm very excited for that. So thank you guys for watching this. That was six new varieties that have really outperformed themselves in the past. So check out the blog guys, figboss.com. Hit that subscribe button. See you guys for the next video. Take care.